guys and welcome. Happy 888. Happy Lions Gate Portal. How is everyone doing? Hello guys, welcome. Welcome. Let me know how you've been, where you're from. I'm going to wait for Sarah to join and then let her in. Hi guys, hello, welcome. Happy 888. Hi, let me know how you've been feeling. Let me know how your system has been integrating these energies. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Hi guys, hello, welcome. Hi Shalom, thank you for being here. Hello from Spain, California. Yeah, let me know where you guys are from and how you've been feeling. Hello from Virginia, welcome. Tired, sleepy, okay, Vancouver, welcome. Yeah, a lot of um a lot of my clients that I've seen this specific week have actually been sick. And none of them, it's not like a long, long sickness. They're all sick for like a day, maybe two days, um, you know, and and it's because there's a lot of clearing that's happening. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Thanks. Yeah, I'm wearing lipstick. I don't usually wear lipstick. Someone said my lips look pretty. <laughs> uh, hello from India. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Hello from Serbia, Belgium. Hello, India, Mars, nice. Wisconsin, Australia. Uh, okay, let me let me let let Sarah in. Okay, there you go. Oh, hi, babe. Hi, can you see me? Yes, I can see you well. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to do this with you. I'm like, I'm wearing lipstick today too because I did a combo ceremony. I broke out. And... Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> that happens with the healing, you know. I was just saying to my followers now that I had about like four or five clients this week who have been physically sick. It's not like, you know, long illnesses, but they're having like 24 hours where they like have the flu or they're sick or stomach bug because everyone's purging a lot. How have you been? Mm. How is, yeah, give us a little bit maybe of an update on what's been going on with you as well. So I was shown that the Lionsgate, so eight is karma too. The letter eight, the number eight is karma. So it's basically also infinity. And I was shown this, that I needed to do the combo ceremony right before the portal to clear out another level and layer of denser energies. So I did, I did it with my whole group of friends over in West Palm. It was so nice. It started raining and I just felt this like cleansing going on that prepped me for the portal. And today I was told that we need to like, you know, get boxes of things to give to local charities of things that we don't need. Um, also, I was told to get a new purse, literally give your old okay. purse away, get a new purse to bring in um, the magical, you know, abundance energies. I was also told to like take magnesium baths, sauna, like today is really about cleansing those energies so we can have the um, what I call the good karma energy come in. And the more that we elevate our energy field by clearing those dense layers, the more that we go up, 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 the more we have abundance of love, friendship, happiness, bliss, everything. So for me, it's like, if I'm knocked down, because I think I was, remember I told you after the ceremony, I was like, I'm just a wall for a couple of days. When I'm knocked down, it's like, okay, I just lay there and I let my system, I usually say to my system, I'm like, show me what I need to change in my life. Show me what I need to shift. Show me what herbs I need to take. Show me what detox and show me what nutrients I need to bring in. So that's, that's how I work with it myself. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think with me, with the lion's gate, it's always interesting because I never really plan. I always kind of like leave this day a little bit to what it is. Um, I did have some energy work done on me today. I had a session with Jerome, which was absolutely incredible. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said to him, I said to him, you must tune in if you can, because I told him we were going live. And even this live, like yesterday, I was like, okay, so what's happening tomorrow? And I tuned in and I was like, 
okay, let me message Sarah. And then like, you know, um, it all aligned because I think, yeah, when we just surrender into the flow of these energies, then exactly as you said, you know, you sit with it, you sit with mm -hmm. your emotions, you sit mm -hmm. with your um, karmic clearing or whatever needs to come through. And then you're in a space where you're able to observe it. Um, even, even if I did try to put a lot of clients today, the universe generally would like clear them for me and be like, mm -hmm. no, today you're working on, you know, either yourself or, you know, what is needed collectively. I'd had a very intense experience this morning in the astral space. And what came through to me is what's happening on a collective level within the astral, but within the 3D as well. A lot of us are actually clearing um, like earth spaces and mountains. Yes. I saw so many mountains being cleared, especially in the States, all the like chains of mountains that like, not that it's like summer now. So it's not like snow. It's like, you know, open and clear. And what I'm, what I was seeing is I was seeing all these beings and I was seeing all these um, entities and denser energies getting extracted out of the mountains and out of the earth. And then a lot of us offering to clear them through our systems. And this is also why some people are getting sick because, and their psychic attacks that are happening because all these energies are being cleared and released. So we can get to the higher level um, on a planetary and on a collective level. So and not last night, but the night before I cleared a lot of timelines. I was actually talking to Jared about this and also um, the Harveys, how we were, cause they were also having some things coming with, come in with this. I was clearing timelines, literally false light timelines that were pain, suffering. There was also timelines like in the 1900s of a lot of energy vampire timelines that completely cleared away. So we were going through them. I was um, going through them with the angels and we were cleansing and clearing that. And I've been shown the same thing. And that's why it's so important to take care of our bodies right now and just like give love and not like think that there's something wrong with us either. Just know that we're here on the planet to help with this mission. This is our divine soul assignment. And we are here, you know, as the seers of the divine to go ahead and help cleanse those timelines. And I just remember like, it was a lot of, honestly, it was a lot of fear. It was a lot of like negative entities. There was like so much of that. And then I was just like, focus on my heart, focus on my heart. The light grew, light grew, light grew. And then it transmuted it, transmuted it. And I was like, I was so happy. I was like dancing like a child yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love it when that happens. Yeah, I love it. And so right now too with the eight. So eight is again, go back to numerology. It eight, and actually I'm an eight, by the way. That's my number. Amazing. That's my life path number. Um, so an eight is about karma. But an eight is also like infinite karma so if you do good things for yourself and others you get infinite blessings and good health and also if you do bad things you get infinite bad karma till you learn your life and tell you learn your lessons and that is actually we need that we literally need that to learn to be good otherwise we would just be reckless you know so eight is also a portal it's a portal into our next lifetimes so what we do in this lifetime right now Eight is the, the Lionsgate portals reminding us right now what we do in this lifetime is important because that's going to create, the, we're infinite, we're immortal, eternal, and that's creating the, the blueprint for the rest of our lifetimes coming up in the near future. So I was shown that and I was shown that, you know, a lot of us too are finding our soulmates and our friend mates and our um, soul flames that from, that were lost in these false light, light timelines that are collapsing. Isn't that amazing? So then we're, we're resonating, we're, we're coming together because we're on a vibrational resonance now because they were like caught in these like webs of false timelines. And as those collapse, we're coming together. And that was like something beautiful that I saw. That's so incredible. Incredible. As you were saying that, I was literally like seeing it like in my head. They were sending me the vision of all these like beings and souls connecting. What came mm. through to me as well, a lot of angelic upgrades are happening. So there's a lot of very, very high vibrational frequency angelic codes that are coming through. And it's interesting because I was having this conversation today with Jerome and we were saying like this came through and this was also kind of like news to me. Um, like the difference, you know, when we send galactic DNA upgrades and when there's angelic DNA upgrades, you know, it's almost like the galactic upgrades are um, more to be integrated for the star seeds. Meanwhile, when you get the angelic DNAs, they resonate on a vibrational frequency that can be really accepted and integrated by the whole collective. So yes. 
not that the others can't be, but it's kind of like they are more like impactful because absolutely everyone has the, the genetic coding and the understanding in the DNA to be able to integrate those type of codes. So that's what came through a lot of this energy, a lot of these angelic codes coming through to assist with the timelines and with the collective. That's amazing reason you're bringing this up because so for me like okay so i had i had this experience where the my et um so my et council they joined with the art angelics with the fairies yeah. like the, all of the different also interdimensional multi-dimensional beings together and then they come to me and then they also report back to each other so i was like oh my god this is amazing and then they created this healing circle and um <laughs> this healing circle so basically it was like an ET, then it was an angel, then it was a fairy, then it was like a leprechaun. Oh. It was like the whole circle and they created this round circle and I was like laying in the middle. It was out of my body. They were like channeling light into me. So they told me that they've all, um, they're all working together right now to create, to help bring in the light codes on different levels and the activations, but they're also working together to transmute a lot of the fair chaos um, energies, a lot of the energies that are keeping the planet down and they were also saying you know because they're all even though they're from different dimensions they're all working together you know because they all are are in alignment via this is what they told me via the divine light that flows through them that's what they told me so it was it was so beautiful so they were like okay we're doing these healing circles and you need to talk more about them. You need to tell people that they can ask the fairies to come in to bring them magic so they can use that magic to get out of, you know, the, the, the places they're stuck in, you know, whether it's bad jobs or, you know, it's a bad condition that they're living in in their lifetime. And then the, the, the ETs are like, we'll come and fix the DNA. We'll come and work on the nervous system. And then the angels are like, we'll work on the soul light. So it was like, they were all, all joined in together to like work together with me. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences. I had that the last couple of years because for a while when I was younger, I was working mostly with the ETs and then boom, I would go to the forest and there's a leprechaun prancing around. And yet yesterday <laughs> I went for a drive and there was this leprechaun and he came and he's like, he poured me a whole bunch of coins and stuff. And he's like, here, I'm giving you more abundance. And then I had this goddess, like she was a um, Greek goddess and she came and gave me a golden apple. And then wow. my assistant looked it up and she's like, oh my God, that's the apple of good health and immortality. It was so beautiful. It's like, oh my gosh, they're all joined together right now. This is beautiful. And I'm just, I, I, get, I'm, I have goosebumps. I'm like a happy child of like, and then there's, so they were like, listen, we are going to transmute the fallen timeline. So they just showed me this too. I don't mean to go on too much because there was there's so much coming through me. Like they told me to wear green today. They said Babe, wear pink, green, or gold. I'm also today. wearing green. Same, oh, same. I'm yes. also wearing like yes. um, my shirt underneath is green. Yes. My pants are green. My bra is green, and my underwear are green. Ah. They were like you need, and it's weird because I don't like I'll wear green every now and then, but it's not like my main go-to color. So I was like, okay, guys, and obviously, yeah. <laughs> They're my, they're my spirit bumps. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I, go ahead. Yeah. So I know I just want to say for me, then what came through is that because there's a lot of heart activations that are happening with this 888 to be able to kind of like support that and be in that frequency, they were like, okay, wear the green, but it came through when I was doing actually the work together um, with Jerome, I was like, okay, oh, now they tell me because it was weird. Like I have a green bra, but I never use it like never. And today they were like, no, you're wearing that one. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, go with it. And then all of a sudden I realized that like, like this isn't green, but everything underneath that I'm wearing is green. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> it's, isn't it beautiful how we're all like in alignment with picking up these different, and then a green dragon. So I was filming um, with the Harvey. So we filmed a, a documentary together about detox and healing. I'm literally, I saw a green dragon like last week when I was down there filming. It was amazing. The green dragon came to me. He was green and gold, by the way. And he came to me and he goes like, this is the return of the dragon. This is like the return of the dragons happening right now, Sarah. And I'm like, okay, thank you for letting me know that. And he's like, uh, he's like, I'm going to stay with you and help you in the astral realms. And 
I was like, thank you so much, but it's been coming through. So then the spirits, they have all been giving me the same message. And they said, there's like these false timelines and there are false timelines of fear, pain, suffering, and they're collapsing right now that we need to go ahead. We need to activate ourselves. We really need to do play too. They told me this. They're like, you need to do play. You need to go do hobbies. You need to dance. You need to do play, do yoga, do things that make you happy. And because as you're ha when you're happy like little child, you have the imagination of little child and image, image, and then magi. So it's magic. Wow. Yes. Wow. When you visualize something, when you're imagining it, it's literally your mat, it's magic. You're creating magic. So we have to, when we're happy, we're creating positive images that is also collapsing those false timelines, which are a lot of negative images they showed me, image imprints on the earth, and we have to clear them. And they were telling me once these are collapse we're gonna go back to the original blueprint before there was like this fallen frequency where we lived for hundreds of years where there was no sickness there was no desert on the planet they and they showed me right yeah. now we're going through this space of where we're just everything's karmically is being vomited up from all the timelines yeah. all the yes and so literally, you know, that, they were vom that vomiting is literally what i was also <laughs> like regurgitated <laughs> out for the collective yeah that's what i also saw yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like being vomited up so it's like okay try to take time in nature because cities right now are so intense um they were also telling me that they're like okay you're you need to just where there's like a lot of like suffering in the world just go ahead and visualize light blue light go in there because it's going to transmute those dense energies and then they were just telling me all of these beautiful things i'm like the world is changing, you know, ever since I was a child, you know, even I remember past lifetimes where this is what I, I, I just was, I would ask the spirits, I would ask the divine, please help the world wake up to the fact that we're more than this physical body, that there are, you know, other beings out there and that we are souls in this beautiful body and that there's much more than this 3D world. And I see it happening and I'm just, I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. And I think I as people are navigating this and they're going through their own lessons and their experiences, they are rewiring themselves to go with their original blueprint, to go with, you know, the original soul mission and be in that space of abundance, of unconditional love, you know? And it's really important, like this is something that came up recently as well. Like, you know, there's a very big misconception with this false light phenomenon that it all has to be, you know, like, oh, love and light and let's all yes. always be happy. And Thank it's like, you. no guys, you need to go into those emotions. The, the vibrational frequency at which you operated is determined by how you respond to them. So yes. do you clear your anger in compassion or do you go and punch someone in the it's, face? Do you know what exactly. I mean? How you respond to it is how you then operate from a 5D template and how you rewire yourself to be in that space where, okay, like you are much more than your emotions. You will get, if you're human, so you're going to feel anger. You're going to feel pain. You're going to, mm -hmm. sometimes you need to externate that, you know, but how you recover, how you navigate navigate that and how you express that into the world determines important. what frequency your system operates at. Thank you for saying this because so this is what I saw too. I saw that our soul and this is the the download I got a day after I did, did you know, Cambo. I had this beautiful, beautiful vision. So our soul is it's like diving in. When we dive into the ocean, our soul is like the bottom of the ocean. That's where the light is at the bottom. So going through those different layers of depths you're going to go through past life trauma karma you're going to go through ancestral trauma you're going to go through all of that and you keep just like clearing it you keep bringing the light in instead of being upset at those parts of yourself you just visualize hugging them saying i love you i'm at peace with you you know i accept you rather than pushing them away when you do that's going to bring light there rather than resisting them say yeah you know i was angry i did this instead of feeling feeling all that guilt and shame say i i did this it was wrong i'll act better next time i love you i embrace you and you keep going through those layers Oh, okay, I, I have a past life that's coming up where there's a lot of trauma. I love you. I love you. You know, you're okay. You're safe. Look, you're still alive. You're here today. You're an eternal and powerful being. So you keep going through that until you get to the, through them. And on the other side, there is that light and that light of the soul. Once we connect deeply to it, then it just knows it's like, okay, yeah, here, this anger is coming up. I'm going to help you yeah. transmute it. I'm going to help you navigate it. And then there's also, you know, two in my experience there's like righteous anger like if somebody does something to you you it 
you you should be yeah. angry at them and you should yeah. say stop doing that to me and that's not okay and that's teaching you to actually have healthy boundaries and yeah. i think we just we just kind of put anger into this whole thing of negativity like ego i think you need to have a neg a, a healthy ego and that we put this whole thing of like all ego is negative that's not my experience my experience from what the the et showed me from my own experience was like to be on the planet to put this dress on so i'm not walking around naked like a cave woman you have to have an amount of ego yeah. to comb your yeah. hair to brush your yeah. teeth you have to have so that i need a healthy ego yeah. is exactly. good and we're on this exactly. earth experience so there I'm sorry, but like the whole ego thing is a whole subject we'll have to get into. But it's like, oh, you're ego because you dress like this or you do your makeup. No, we're on this earth to express. Stop using your unhealed insecurities to project on others and say yeah. ego because that's just as bad as unawakened people who are saying horrible things to each other. Yeah, so the, I think, I th yeah, sorry. Um, okay. I think the. Yeah, I think the important thing to understand is that the ego is necessary. It just needs to be integrated in a healthy yes. way. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, and it's only a problem when it creates a blockage. So let's say, um, you know, you're at the beach, you don't want to put your bikini on because you're not comfortable with yourself. That's an ego blockage, you know, to, <laughs> to whatever extent people want to see it. That's an ego blockage. You know what I mean? So when the ego is integrated and it's healthy, it's okay to express. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay. I mean, to wear makeup and wear nice clothes yes. as long as it doesn't stop you from living your life. So if in the morning you're like, oh my God, I can't go out unless I have my makeup, then you have a problem. Then you have an unhealthy attachment. If you care about then, what you know, other, other yeah. people think of you, you should do things that make you happy. Exactly. That's yeah, just the exactly. most important thing. Yes. And it's like, as long as this makes me happy, Hey, that might be the ugliest skirt in the world, but as long as I like it, I'm okay with yeah. it. I don't care if everybody thinks it's ugly. That's how I, and I as long as, as you don't have attachment to identity and you yes. know that you're an infinite being of light and you go beyond the skirt, the dress, the makeup and whatever it is, once you know that, then, okay, then you're, you know, we're here to play. We're here to explore. We're here to be human exactly as you said, but I think it requires a very high level of ego integration to also understand something like this and i think it goes again through trial and error you know um and the problem comes also in when people lock into judgment so you know when you lock into judgment and you're judging someone else for what they're doing or what they're wearing or who they are that's when you then allow distortions to come in your field and that's when you're not operating anymore from a space of unconditional love i don't care if who says who wants to go around wearing Mm, I don't know, crystals all over their face and no clothes. Like <laughs> people must do what they want. You know, I'm not here to judgment. Not for me. I won't do it, but they No, must do what I they really want, love you know Shanine. I mean? She's like that. I love how she dresses. I'm like, she's so adorable with the crystals. So it's here. Like, yeah, it's just I do that yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just expression people must express themselves and the yeah, problem with the spiritual world like we need to stop yeah. judging each other and we need to realize that we're all art yes. we're all beautiful pieces of art in, ex in expressing that it's it's and we, we need to be grateful for that instead of the, you know just judging everything and i feel like the more that another you judge another it's because you're so judgmental i would say this nobody ever hates me they just really hate themselves and that's sad. A person never can truly hate you. They actually just hate themselves. It's a sad thing, but that's the truth about it. Yeah. And I was shown this by the light spirits and it's like, okay, for the world to change people, everyone wants better lives right now. Everyone wants a better world. That's clear. It's, it's pretty, pretty intense out there. Well, you guys got to start within, start just by loving yourselves. And once you love yourselves, that's going to shine to everyone around you. And then you're going to be so accepting of them. You're going to be like, I love you. Of course, we need to have healthy boundaries where there's people who are abusive, who haven't learned to heal yet and stuff. But that, they need, you know, they definitely need tough love. But you don't need to be judging yourself. You don't need yeah. to be hard on yourself. You need to be loving to yourself. Because and the most important, that, yeah, sorry, go ahead, sorry. Go Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, guys, we've like it's all so much information. And no, right. what I just want to say is with regards to the boundaries, it's really important that you say and you assert the boundary for whatever situation it is, because if you don't, you are subconsciously giving consent and allowing for people to step over you or to people please and whatnot. So even when you are scared and you feel like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen and whatnot. 
no one who is meant to be for you will ever leave you from a boundary that comes out of heart and how out of love and out of the highest form of self-love you know and the people who do decide to remove themselves from your energy field and from your frequency were not meant to be there in the first place so you can never lose by speaking your truth and setting your boundaries exactly and i also saw that we're all pieces of the puzzle and some pieces of the puzzle don't fit and hey when you're trying to fit a piece of the puzzle that isn't in 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 sync with you what happens you're missing out on the people who are so it's better to let the universe just remove those people out of your life you know and let the people flow in that are meant to be around you i learned this lesson like a year ago because i was like I love everyone and I had to realize that not everyone is at that level of, you know, loving everyone that I met. And so I had to create a lot of healthy boundaries because I went through a situation last year and it was like, okay, you had a lot of dreams that said, be careful here. You had dreams, you know, about this and you didn't listen and you tried to force it and look what happened. So nowadays I'm like, Hey, what's meant for me is, and what's not meant for me is I'm, I just feel very non-attached in a, in a place of detachment from outcomes what when it comes to people outcomes when it comes to business outcomes to everything i'm like god divine whatever you want let it flow in whatever you don't want remove because you sure i'm this wise ancient being but you are more wiser than me and me being in flow with that energy you can see the big picture more than i can so i'm just willing to give it all all to you and this is a great exercise too i learned I just like laying down in my bed before I go to sleep. And I'm like, even with family members, um, you know, even with exes, when they try to come back, even with everything, I'm like, divine, I give it up to you. You know, if there's something in business that's not flowing divine, I give it up to you. I surrender this to you. Take it. I know, you know what to do with it. And I'm struggling with it right now. Take it. And it just releases. And I release it, release it, release it. After everything goes into flow, yeah. literally everything goes into flow. So it's like, okay, if there's fear, if you have fear of entities, fear of this, give it up to the divine and say, you know, also, yeah, we're powerful beings. And I know I teach this, you teach this, we're aware of this, but sometimes we also need to take breaks. Yeah. And I did this whole thing of where like, you need to say angels. And another thing, this is like healthy boundaries here. Some people are using their guides, their angels, their ET kin too much they're oh help me here help me there all the time that's too much you've got to do a lot of your own work but then they can come in and help you too but yeah sure for us doing a lot of our own work it's important that we take time and we say to the ets we say to the light beings we say to the angels please take care of this for me because <laughs> i'm having a i'm having a yeah. intense day yeah here. and what i please what I Please assist me. Yeah. What I find with a lot of star seeds and a lot of us who have come here on this planet, because we've existed in these very high vibrational frequency spaces where there aren't emotions like envy, anger, jealousy, or things like right. that, we are generally so unconditionally loving, you know, and then we end up getting like backstabbed. Like, you, exactly like you were saying, I have to learn Whoa. in my own experience. Wow. You know, that like, oh, okay, like, you know, especially like, I, I see this, I've seen this a lot, not so much anymore now, but growing up, like, and you probably have the same, being like, beautiful woman, we want other women to be happy and yeah. beautiful, but a lot of women, I don't want that, so they end up, like, pretending to be your friend, and then back, like, the worst backstabs I've received, actually, from have my, been from Yeah, my best friend of women. 10 years, it you know, was so intense, yeah, we talked about that. And it's funny because you're right. Like, this is another subject that's really great to hit on. I never feel jealous or I never feel jealous, jealous or envious. And I'm like, hey, you know, if I want to be more in shape, I'm just going to go more in shape, get more in shape. If I want to make myself more beautiful, I don't look at another girl and be like, oh, she's got better than me or more than me or this or she. I just go ahead. I'm like, hey, you know what, Sarah, you're just going to work on getting a better booty <laughs> like yeah, we're gonna I think squat we so all are hard. unique um we all Sarah, unique and no one is the same yeah. so, and i've yeah, had a lot like, of like where girls did it to me for um my ex-boyfriends or the guy that i was close to where they just did that and i have such an abundance of men trying to come in i'm like and so maybe also i think like i'm trying to look at this in different ways because i guess like I did an exercise recently where it's like, was if I was that girl who didn't get any 
attention from guys didn't have any boyfriends that were ever kind to her because i've been treated like a princess in most of my relationships and tra treated really well because i have like healthy boundaries and just my energy men always step up for me and i, I i'm putting myself in that place i'm like oh to just to feel that energy out and i'm like oh that that comes from literally the lack a lack of inner love Literally. Yeah, and I so mean, I've been there. Yeah. I know. I've been in unions where I was. I've been in abusive unions, and I've been so I know kind of like what it what it can be like. And I think that a lot of people, they especially like a lot of women, they struggle again with the self love, with yeah. the self trust, yeah. and having been also like mm -hmm. too trustworthy or too loving, you know, then they find themselves in these yeah. situations where they don't have the boundaries. So it's all kind of like interconnected. Oh, we have, and have so many lives yeah. on this girl because like i love you so much and this is such a uh because I, I was talking about men who do trauma dump it so they go from one woman to another and they don't like feeling their own emotions and they're men's men who are addicts men who have a lot of trauma and they literally go from one woman and they take her energy and give her their her their bad energy and that's their womanizers and then I feel like this is a big one that's being popularized everywhere. And sadly, it's like that it's normal for men to do that, to be womanizers. And it, honestly, it's not, that's not the divine masculine. And it's, yeah, that's, you know, that's the thing. Not, so yeah. I, I see that a lot, even in our field of men who aren't stepping it up and doing their trauma healing and you're, they're addicted to escapism literally. Yeah, so I literally, yeah, yeah, it's like not wanting to feel your own energy field. And even for me, it's like, I um I love feeling my own energy feel like I love it. I sit with her and I'm like, hi, what messages do we have today for like this physical body for my physical life? And I another thing that's cultivated. I am doing yoga. I am having my saunas. I am doing my plant medicine. I'm doing my energy work. I'm having a healthy diet. I'm literally doing things that make me happy physically, emotionally, and energetically. And I don't think that, you know, also, I don't think that, I think a lot of people are dating from a place of lack and making bad decisions. Yeah. So we have Trauma to, as bonding. women, instead of, yeah, as women, and even men, I think instead of being like, you got to find that love in yourself. You really do. Because if you look for it in another person, it's never going to work out. You need to find that love in yourself. And when you find that love in yourself, you're going to have people coming to you with amazing offers. And you're going to look for, at it from a, um, you're going to look at it from a place that's healthy within yourself of like, hmm, should I accept that? Is that, is that in alignment? Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Let me see yeah. that. That's how I am. Yeah. So it's like, because, and then I feel like when you've done work like us, like I recently just had a billionaire. He was like, I want to get married and have, chil have children. And when, down when I was in West Palm and I've had a couple billionaires try to date me, um, millionaires, celebrities. And I'm like, hmm, I, we don't look at it the same. I was telling my friend the other day, because he was like asking me, he's like, Sarah, why is it you won't date these guys? And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm looking at inner cultivation. I'm not looking at how much money you have, how much status you have. Great. That's great. You have money. You know, I take care of myself. That's fine. Um, I love provider men, by the way. That's awesome. But I'm looking at, are you doing your shadow work, men? Yeah. Because sorry, looks don't do it anymore. Money doesn't do it anymore. It's more like, are you really going into that shadow? Because I'm doing it as a woman. You yeah. can do it too. So that's you want how someone I who resonates on that level. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for someone who's striving to be a better version of themselves, who is doing exactly. the work in whatever way that looks for him. It doesn't, this is what I always say. Like, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go date in the spiritual community if you don't want to. You can still date someone who is in a good alignment, who is a nice human, who is doing their own work, but isn't necessarily like a spiritual guru or doing like language or doing energy healing. You know what I mean? Agreed. And it goes both Agreed. ways, you know. Someone can be in a really good alignment and operating from a high vibration frequency 5D template and still be a lawyer or an architect exactly, or a doctor. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And I think that, uh, I think too, that we have a lot in the new age community. We do have a lot of men too who become like the whole, you know, but they also are very, very promiscuous and polyamorous and they're not loyal to the women and that's something else like, i see my girlfriends go through and then it's like 
they're literally using that whole thing of escapism, but then they're putting on the, the, the mask of yeah. a guru. So that's yeah, another good and, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a huge thing because I mean, when I released my ebook like two, three years ago, and I speak about sexual energy cords, like you picking up all that stuff oh, energetically, because you're not just merging energetically, you're also merging physically with someone. So all the trauma, all the stuff they picked up from other people, you're now picking up in your system like do you really this is why i mean again like everyone must do what they want to do i believe in like free will yes. and i wouldn't judge anyone ever but for me personally because of the container that i hold and the frequency that i hold um i wouldn't put myself in a situation where i'm having multiple partners and now i don't know where this one's been or that and it's just like no it's, like sorry you, you get know? connected into that false entity hive too that's the yeah. thing i saw that i saw this I worked with clients and they had some of my clients they worked with that had mental illness or even they could manifest a partner. They were completely drained age beyond, um, age beyond their years. Once we started clearing all the cords, sucking the life force out of their root chakra, because you have to realize that energy yeah. is our life force. It comes up, it nourishes our organs. It nourishes, it makes us have a blissful, happy mind. It literally comes up, it charges us. So when you have all these links to other people sucking the life force out of you, you're going to be sucked down. And I, I literally noticed this. I, this is so crazy how like, oh my gosh. So I was looking at my guy friends from like 10 years ago. Lots of them were like, you know, great looking guys, right? Model looking guys. I look 10 years later after they've done a lot of womanizing, they look so distorted. They lost their looks. It is insane. Like there's no more life force in there. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, so I observed this. And I even observed, a lot, you know, people who did that. And I think, of, of course, everyone makes their own choices and you make your own choices. That's good. I respect that. But we also need to take into account how things energetically affect us, whether it's, whether it's affecting us positively or negatively. Yeah. This is very, very important. But yeah, this is, you know, a mental illness. A lot of people who had a lot of like weird thoughts and stuff, it was coming from links. And once we remove that, oh, wow. it went away. Yeah. 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 Of course, that would make sense. Because I mean, it's also to an extent psychic attacks that are and, coming. And people can take allowing... abundance. You know that if no? you have, yeah. if you're a person who has abundance and you have, they can, and you get with a person who doesn't have abundance, they literally, I'm not kidding, you can take your abundance energy. I was shown this, this, the angels showed me that, they also showed me that they can, they can also not only take your abundance, they can, um, they can take other blessings out of your life, literally, because when you connect with them, you're getting, imagine you're connecting with somebody right here and you cultivate yourself and you're up here energetically, what's gonna happen? This is, that's what's gonna yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 so i think just be mindful you know who you're connecting with and having said that you don't you know have to vow for celibacy but just know that the you know, life force is important and be mindful who you're connecting with because there's a lot going on out there and especially especially if you're working on people like this is what baffles me there's people out there that are working energetically on people mm -hmm. but then they're not really cultivating spiritual hygiene. So you're just like, what are you passing on to your clients? The amount of people that have come it's all to the me. the best subjects. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. The amount Go of ahead. people that have come to me that I've had to clear energetically from other energy workers that aren't operating in integrity is quite Hundreds like, of, them. Quite hundreds of yeah. them here. I've had to do hundreds of them. And I'm talking about really well-known people in the community. Hundreds of clients I've had to clear negative entities, had to clear them because yes, and this is why it's important to work with somebody who is actually doing their work and holding the frequency because words are nothing if you're not holding the frequency. I was talking to Jared about that this morning because we're also doing a, a group for trauma, people who have had trauma, you know, because that's a big thing because he's healed a lot from trauma. And we were talking about that, of how like, you know, there's a lot of healers out there that honestly, they are not they're struggling. They're living in their cars. They, they have nothing. They have bad health and stuff. And they're just like, oh yeah, they're offering these courses. And there's like, it's, yeah, they, they don't even yeah. have a good frequency themselves. Yeah. And I'm like, to me, that's shocking yeah. because it's like, if I'm, I work with people too. I do a lot of my work myself, but I work rarely with people. I'm very picky. You better be another level to, and I yeah. want to learn that level. I to get think to that abundance. Level. 
abundance is a big one. You can see if an energy worker is the real deal, if they're actually like, <laughs> if they're actually in an abundant space, because, you know, again, you don't have to be a billionaire or a millionaire, but you have to be in a space where you're comfortable, you know, and you've With it, cleared yes. the scars, then mm -hmm. you've cleared those scarcity templates, because if you're struggling to make ends meet, and now you're going out there and like healing people, like you're not really operating from a space of integrity. And exactly as how you said, you know, like, and what I've noticed with these people is that they don't tend to last very long. Um, no. and it's almost like they'll yeah. get, it's, it's almost like once they're the hype or whatever energy they working with kind of like fizzles out because it's not sustainable. If yes. you are in a space where you have leakages in your aura and in your energy field, your cup isn't full, you're not going to be able to assist others. So like we know perfectly well, you know, like if I'm moving through my own energetic stuff, I'll take a few days off and I'm like, actually guys, like, I'm sorry, like I can't do any work today um, or this week or whatever, like I'll reschedule you because I need to come first. I need to offer you a service that is, you know, 90%, like if I'm less than 90%, I'm not going to, you know, and that then is in integrity. Thank you for saying that. So I took most of last year off because of what I went through and I was like, okay, I just need to do a lot of work to fill my own cup, heal from this betrayal that went on with my friend. And so I just took most of it off. And you know what? The thing is, is you're right. When you hold the resonance of higher energies, things flow in like, I have also, well, you know, like I have all sorts of things flowing in. You have all sorts of things. Like I have all sorts, when it comes to love, when it comes to opportunities, when it comes to abundance, it's incredible. Just like just doors works. open and doors open and yeah. everywhere. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's, I noticed too, another thing, like if you want to heal, you do a parasite de detox. And if, sorry, if you want abundance, you do a parasite detox. I'm not kidding you. The more parasites that came out, I was doing this all last year. Cause I went, I decided to jump in depth and in depth into this parasite cleanse last year. And the more you, every time I lose a parasite, like I'd have something positive happen to me. I was Wonderful. like, oh, this is great. And then Cambo too. I was like, if you really yeah. want to shift your life, Cambo. Um, also doing a lot of shadow work, like shadow work and boom, because it's the dense energies that keep us from being able to manifest. When that pulls you down, you can't manifest. So you've got to keep going into them, transmuting them till it's light. And then boom, you're in the higher consciousness. And once you're in the higher consciousness, you are like that little happy child imagining things and they happen. I woke up yesterday morning. I'm like, okay, I want my whole group to go and do a shamanic ceremony with me. And I'm like, you know, the divine was like, I'm going to open this door. I'm like, okay, there's one in California. There's some in Abu Dhabi. There's some here. Like, I need them all together in one place. All these phone calls came in from them. And guess what? We manifested to have us all in one place to do the shamanic ceremony that I want to do with them. And it's like, I just was like, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Amazing you see um do you do we want to do a little bit of light language maybe a little bit of a guided meditation how do you feel um you know what i think that today i so i've been shown about the the gold light and the green light i'd say why don't you go ahead and do light language while you're doing that i'm going to channel i want everybody to just focus on filling themselves and the planet with golden green light what about okay. that Okay, perfect. So I'll do a little bit of light language and guide them in and then I'll pass it over to you and you can anchor them in with the light. How's perfect. that? Okay, wonderful. So we can just all close our eyes and start anchoring into our bodies as we find our comfortable breathing rhythms. And with every inhale, we breathe in light. And with every exhale, we release all that doesn't serve us anymore. And as we call on the Archangelic Collective, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east and Gabriel to the west. We call on Archangel Metatron with his blue cloak of protection from above and sound of one to seal the grid from below. As we call on our higher selves or spirit guides and anyone else who wishes to be present for the greatest and highest good, you're welcome in the space. Opening, opening, opening. Opening systems, opening, 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 rising, 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 end divine rays, golden rays, aura rays, rainbow rays, 
platinum white light, silver rays, anchoring, 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 anchoring into systems. Rashira yata kokoro ishinata ka. Tratre atreya to kumare sa sietara ya ishieta ka koro ishira yata ka. Tara yara triya treo koa tia isia sie koro at kriya tare. Tre nara tract krasi ukoa ishina yata ya sir as we expand into more light, more light. We expand our heart centers, expanding, 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 tuning, expanding, tuning, 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 tuning. Okay, clean, releasing, 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 letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, neutralizing timelines, aligning, 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 aligning templates. Neutralizing set akara tree taka, trana ratria kiro koko arasia siera taka rea taka takra tre uko arai shiekt. Ndraya siero ko area tre akiet kura ya tara trena ratre o na ya shia siera takra siera takra tre ukuro ishena takra. As we come to ourselves, we find yetukuro ishira, an expansive yetukuro expansiveness, compassion into our hearts, unconditional love, unconditional self love. Kiro kura yatra trietaka, tre no kuro a tre asira, asira to kuro asia. We bring back all pieces and parts of self. Yashiro kuro kuro that I needed for us at this moment in time, integrating any shame, fear, guilt, anger, resentment. We let it go, we release it. Kiro kuro ishira ishira yataka as we step into a higher. Template of self at this moment in time. Kiero kua ishina ya tara treo kuro tro kuro ishira ya siera tara treo taka kaka ishira ya tara treo kuro kuo ishina taka ra ishira tara si taka ra ishira takra. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and just bring in the dragon energy because they're talking to me right now. So they're saying that they're going to come in and cleanse the dense energies in everyone using the sacred dragon fire sacred flame so i want everyone just to clear their minds and let this dragon energy come in and purify you cleanse out those dense energies burn them out and of course you could have one in there she could have they're clearing the head the crown chakra because they're saying there's a lot of dense thoughts in the world right now and everyone so they're clearing that out mm -hmm. and they're saying just bring bring out your inner dragon that inner dragon has a lot of wisdom ancient wisdom let it flow to you this wisdom Just thanking that sacred fire for cleansing us, for shifting our, our frequency. Mm, a lot of heaviness with some of you. It's it's burning that, that out deeply. It's coming up from the, I'm seeing it's just coming up. A lot of it is actually coming up from the root chakra, from the sacral, from the stomach. Okay, because the digestion, the stomach holds a lot of the unprocessed emotions. So they're, the dragons are showing this to me right now. So they're burning that out. They're burning through that right now. And they're just saying, put your hands on your stomach. Literally right now, put your hands on your stomach and visualize this, this beautiful, beautiful golden green light pouring, pouring into your stomach. And just charge in your stomach. The energy of your stomach and cleansing your stomach. They're also telling me that we need to put crystals on our belly buttons to clear it. So they're showing me rose quartz, obsidian. They're also showing me a dark blue stone. I'm not sure what, which one this is. This one is. If anyone gets any channelings on what that is. They're also saying that you can put essential oil of rosemary to clear the energy of your stomach right now. You put it in your belly button. As we're doing that, we're now going to go ahead and visualize the golden and green light pouring into our entire system, head to toe. We're going to let that light literally just 
pulsate through, through us, vibrate through us. You might need to move around a little bit like this to release your chakra system, release your spine. Just go with the flow. So this the Dragon Council, they're they're showing me how in Atlantis that they they were part of the council there and they're talking about the bodies. They're saying that a lot of the souls on this planet don't know how these bodies function. So they want to bring back some of the ancient knowledge of how these bodies function. Mm, they're also showing me a lot of lost technology right now that's coming through. So they're going to give visions to those of you in the group that's connecting to them. They're going to give you visions. They're going to show you different knowledge. That's what they're showing me. They're the knowledge keepers, the knowledge, the knowledge oracles. I'm going to take a couple of deep breaths. I'm going to hold that light in us for around another minute. This is the last message I'm going to channel from them. They're saying do things in your life that make you excited and passionate, that make you feel alive. This is so important for your well-being and your healing. Thank the, thank the great dragons, the ancient spirits. I can come back now. <laughs> I started overheating. <laughs> They just, they're still talking to me. Oh, he's right here though. So um, the dragon temple, they're just talking to me about the dragon temple right now. And they were, they were literally showing me these like, almost like the sarcophagus, but much, much different and older where we would, we would get in and it would heal the bodies and we don't have any of that technology left. That, that technology, knowledge of that technology on the planet, we, we have it left, like in, in um, Egypt and stuff, it's there, but nobody knows how it functions and why it's there. So they were like saying, okay, people need to learn about these bodies. They literally need to learn how they function. <laughs> yeah, it was real, definitely very powerful, so beautiful, so expansive. And for me also, I was also seeing a lot of tech, a lot of geometry, a lot of this dragon egyptian energy like there's no other way to like describe it that's literally what right? it felt like yeah i this is incredible so they're going to bring a lot of that knowledge because they're the knowledge they're really the knowledge keepers on that they're going to bring it back they were telling me so you know this is something i was talking about with my friend andrea about us creating literally creating some of this technology and doing a um doing kind of a healing center with it. I am down to do that in the future. So that's on my, <laughs> that's list. in my plan. Yeah. yeah. And also guys, me and Sarah are gonna, we have a lot of projects in the making. So we're gonna do like a membership very soon. So keep following. Cause yeah, like we like work really, really, really well together. So we want to offer, you guys the best that we can offer like exclusively. So you're hearing it here for the first time. We haven't like released this yet. So, so yeah, so I keep following. And yeah, is there anything you want to add before we go off? I want to say this. I'm excited because I think in the group, what I want to do, because we are doing some secret projects and in the group, I want to go ahead and do a lot of work with the dragons with everyone. That would be so, that's just coming through. That hadn't came through before. So yeah, I'm excited because we have so many projects together and I obviously love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I, she's my sister, literally, I was at the Conscious Life Expo, and we were sat next to each other, and I was like, oh, she's an alien, I could see her yeah, alien form, like, she looked at me. <laughs> I was like, we're exactly where we need to be, we yes. are magnetized <laughs> to each other. 
I I love you so much. I love you. Yeah, so I'm excited too, for us. I'm, ex I'm excited for the world too. And I'm excited that we get to live out our soul, yeah. soul mission to bring this ancient knowledge to the world. And we are going to see a world where there is ancient technology that we're using it once again. We're going to see the rise of the golden age. And I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you for being with me and with the with humanity on this mission. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your gift. And thank you for your light and for being such a bright beacon of light. Um, I think we need, you know, more of that. And yeah, thank you for everyone who's here, guys. You guys are also just as important. We all part of the puzzle. With regards to me, I have the Costa Rica retreat coming up in November. So I've got a few slots left for that. So you can find all the links in my bio. I've got an event coming up on the 9th of September um, for the portal there. And I've got a collective healing coming up also in mid-September. So that's my two kind of like live events that are coming up. But if you will then connect and be part of our membership page, you will have access to all of this stuff and a whole bunch of our other courses and things like that. And definitely a lot of work with the dragons. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank I'll chat to you thank soon. You. Thank you everyone who tuned in. Enjoy your 8-8. Eight, eight. Manifest, ground, balance, align. Be kind and gentle to yourselves and to everyone around you. Love Bye. you guys. Bye.